The Pacific Plate and the North American Plate are separated by the San Andreas Fault, which is a sliding border. It divides the state of California in half, from Cape Mendocino to the border with Mexico. The Pacific Plate is located in the cities of San Diego, Los Angeles, and Big Sur. On the North American Plate lies the cities of San Francisco and Sacramento, as well as the Sierra Nevada Mountains. In addition, despite widespread belief to the contrary, the San Andreas Fault does not pass directly through the middle of San Francisco. Communities like Desert Hot Springs, San Bernardino, Wrightwood, Palmdale, Gorman, Fraser Park, Daly City, Point Reyes Station, and Bodega Bay lie directly on the fault and are at an increased risk of earthquakes because of their location. In geological terms, what kind of fault is the San Andreas? A transform fault, the San Andreas Fault may be found in California. Imagine putting two slices of pizza on a table and pushing them past each other until they meet along the common edge of the pizza. Fragments of pepperoni from one side fall over the border onto the anchovy side as the pizza is being cut. The same thing happens when the fault and the geology and landforms along the huge rift are exceedingly difficult due to the rift's location. How quickly does it move about? The plates are inching their way closer to one another at a rate of a couple of inches per year, which is roughly equivalent to the speed at which your fingernails grow. Yet this is not a motion that is constant. Rather, it is a motion that is average. Because they are pressed up against one another, the plates will stay fixed in place for many years without any movement at all. The tension that had been building up along the fault suddenly causes the rock to crack, and as a result, the plates slip a few feet all at once. The fracturing of the rock causes waves to propagate in all directions, and it is these waves that humans experience as earthquakes. Is the fault able to be seen from the surface? The fault can be seen as a sequence of scarps and pressure ridges in numerous locations, such as the Carrizo Plain, which is located in San Luis Obispo County, and the Olima Trough, which is located in Marin County. In certain areas, the fault hasn't moved in a considerable amount of time, and as a result, it is obscured by alluvium or overgrown with bush. This makes it appear less obvious. Several of the highways that run along the fault in San Bernardino and Los Angeles counties pass through large mountains of gouge, which is the powdery, crumbled rock that has been pulverized by the moving plates. The San Andreas Fault can be identified by the diverse rock formations that can be seen on either side of the fault. Due to the passage of time over the past, about 28 million years, rocks from many varied locations and origins have become intermixed with rocks from very wide distances. Some people believe that the selenian block of granite that may be found in central and northern California originated in southern California, while others believe it came from northern Mexico. The Ninach Volcanics are located approximately 200 miles to the southeast in Los Angeles County, while Pinnacles National Monument in Monterey County is the only component of a volcanic complex that is currently protected as a national monument. Fault Myths the San Andreas Fault is the subject of a number of urban legends and myths, the most prevalent of which holds that it will eventually break and cause the state of California to slide into the ocean. Wrong! It is not going to happen, and it's not even possible. There is also no such thing as earthquake weather or certain periods of the day that are more likely to experience earthquakes. The error that made it famous all around the globe. The San Andreas Fault is, in comparison to other faults across the world, the easiest to visit. As a result of the state of California's enormous population and generally mild temperature, there are a lot of highways that wind along the fault. They are not congested and have a calm atmosphere, making them ideal for outings with the family. Throughout the route, there are numerous opportunities for camping, observing wildflowers and animals, gathering rocks, and experiencing the natural beauty of the area. The fault is lined with state and national parks, which are spaced out like beads on a string. To visit the most famous fault in the world, all you need is an accurate map, a reliable vehicle, and an adventurous spirit. Earthquakes that occurred in California The San Andreas Fault began to take shape some 30 million years ago, whereas the southern section of the fault has only been existence for approximately 5 million years at this point. The rate of slippage along the fault is pretty typical, ranging from 20 to 35 millimeters every year, which is about equivalent to the pace at which your fingernails grow. 
This pace may not seem like much, and when viewed over the course of a few years, it is accurate to say that not much will change as a result of it. On the other hand, when looking at longer time scales, the unrelenting motion of the plates will build the stress that was discussed earlier and it will release the stress in the form of earthquakes. That was nearly a century ago when the error was discovered. Andrew Lawson, a geology professor at the University of California, Berkeley, discovered the fault in 1895 and named it after a lake in the area known as Laguna de San Andreas. Lawson had no idea that he had also uncovered a previously unknown sort of earthquake that has been dubbed an intermediate depth earthquake. On the other hand, let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. It was well knowledge that California was prone to earthquakes. Plate tectonics, on the other hand, didn't become a widely accepted theory until the 1970s. And back then, it wasn't even entirely clear how the San Andreas Fault was connected to earthquakes. The earthquake that took place in Hayward in 1868 was a relatively recent one, and it was responsible for significant damage and casualties on both sides of the bay. Yet not even Lawson had a clear understanding of what was taking place. When a devastating earthquake rocked San Francisco in 1906, everything was turned upside down. The earthquake was responsible for the death of over 3,000 people and the destruction of almost 80% of the city. When the fires were finally put out, Lawson put together a team of eminent geologists from all across the U.S. to investigate the earthquake and its possible connection to the San Andreas Fault. Their mission was to find further clues about the earthquake. The group mapped their findings into a thorough report after documenting seismograph data of the earthquake from all around the world, documenting the damage on buildings in San Francisco, analyzing the geology around San Francisco, and documenting the damage on San Francisco buildings, now referred to as the Lawson Report. The report was both so significant and so detailed that it is still regarded as a milestone in the examination of earthquakes in the U.S. even to this day. In addition to this, the findings of the research demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that the San Andreas Fault is the mother of all earthquake faults. Yet, the concept that there was lateral movement occurring beside the plate continued to be a contentious point of debate. In point of fact, almost half a century later in 1953, when geologists Mason Hill and Thomas Dibley claimed that the San Andreas Fault was definitely migrating laterally, the theory was deemed revolutionary at the time. It was not until the next two decades that plate tectonics was validated as a theory and established as a scientific fact. Obviously, the earthquakes that occurred in 1868 and 1906 were not the only significant ones that took place. Because of this, a flood of research was done on the San Andreas Fault, which resulted in a significant improvement in our understanding of the fault, as well as geology in general. Throughout the course of the previous 24 years alone, more than 3,000 research were published on the fault. For example, researchers found that the fault produces an earthquake of magnitude 6 approximately once every 22 years on average. These kinds of occurrences took place in 1857, 1881, 1901, 1922, 1934, and 1966, displaying an extraordinary periodicity. Yet, it is not possible to determine with absolute certainty when an earthquake will occur. This was demonstrated once again when the earthquake that followed the one that occurred in 1966 occurred all the way in 2004. As was previously discussed, earthquakes take place when a sufficient amount of stress builds up and is subsequently released all at once. Although it is possible to make educated guesses about the overall behavior of such a system, it is not possible to pinpoint the precise moment at which an earthquake would take place. Despite this, researchers have uncovered several potential leads. The next significant earthquake to hit, the San Andreas Fault is the location of the majority of people's homes in the state of California. In fact, certain cities and other development projects are built directly on top of it. Even if there have been some precautions taken, millions upon millions of people are still at risk of being affected by an earthquake, and it is easy to see why so many people are anxious about the situation. Even though earthquakes of a magnitude of 6 have the potential to cause significant damage in highly populated areas, on the whole, they are not catastrophic. 
yet a magnitude 7 earthquake or perhaps an even more catastrophic magnitude 8 earthquake might cause absolute devastation. The scale used to measure the magnitude of earthquakes is a logarithmic scale with a base of 10. This indicates that for every order of magnitude, the earthquake is 10 times more powerful. An earthquake of magnitude 8 is 100 times more powerful than one of magnitude 6 and 10 times more powerful than one of magnitude 7. When might we anticipate a truly major earthquake in the San Andreas Fault? It is difficult to accurately anticipate when an earthquake will occur. All we can do is acquire a basic idea of when one might occur. Let us stress this point once more. Having said all of this, a study that was conducted in 2006 and published in Nature came to the conclusion that the San Andreas Fault has achieved a suitable stress level for an earthquake of magnitude 7 or higher. According to the findings of the study, the risk is greatest in the southern portion of the fault, which corresponds to the region in and around Los Angeles. In point of fact, the results of a number of studies indicate that Los Angeles may be long overdue for an earthquake. There hasn't been a major earthquake in the Los Angeles region in over 300 years. Strong earthquakes have occurred relatively recently on the central 1857 and northern 1906 segments of the fault, which has relieved some of the stress in those areas. But there hasn't been a major earthquake in the Los Angeles region in over 300 years. The metropolitan area of Palm Springs and Indio, as well as adjacent communities in San Bernardino County, Riverside County and Imperial County in California, would sustain significant damage in the event of an earthquake in this region. It is difficult to even put into words how devastating an earthquake of this magnitude would be. To put it another way, California is not ready for a major earthquake, and it's possible that a major earthquake won't be all that far away.